I think it's safe to say at this point that the CDC is nothing more than a political activist organization. Welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're returning, welcome back. I truly appreciate your continued support, and I hope that you are subscribed as well, particularly if you are watching on Rumble, because we do need to support platforms that support free speech, and YouTube is just not that. Just when we think things cannot get any more depraved. The CDC recently published guidance and recommendations for both men and women who have either had surgery to completely remove their breasts or men who are taking potent drugs to promote the development of breast tissue in their body to breastfeed or chest feed their newborn infants. So according to this article in the New York Post, it says the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention official website published advice for trans and non-binary individuals on seeking guidance on how to chest feed their infants. In sections of the Major Health Institute's guidance on breastfeeding, it contained information for those who have had much of their breasts removed in gender reassignment surgeries or for biological men taking hormones to grow breasts on how to feed their newborn children. However, several doctors criticized the guidance, not simply because CDC has appeared to guide biological men in how to breastfeed children, but because they claim the CDC has failed to gauge the risk, the risk posed to children drinking milk produced by chemicals used in gender reassignment medical operations. The outlet spoke to multiple doctors who criticized the CDC for not mentioning the health risks posed to infants chest feeding from biological men transitioning with female mimicking hormones. Executive Director of the Conservative Association of American Physicians and Sur Surgeons, Dr. Jane Orient, told the Daily Mail, the CDC has a responsibility to talk about the health risks, but they have been derelict in doing that. She also claimed we have no idea what the long-term effects on the child will be if trans parents are using all kinds of off-label hormones, meaning drugs that are being used in a, diff in a different purpose than for which they were intended. So do I even need to tell you what the potential problems with this could be. You don't have to be a doctor or have a PhD of any kind to understand the very, very, very serious implications of this. And if you think that being opposed to this is simply out of political bias, then you're deranged, plain and simple. I have had three babies, and I admit that I primarily chose to formula feed, which you can have your own opinions about, but I did breastfeed for a short time, each of my babies. And there are so many things that you have to be careful of while breastfeeding a baby. Every medication prescribed or over the counter, you need to check with your doctor and make sure it's safe for the baby because yes, these things are made for adults, but whatever you put into your body needs to be safe for the infant because it will pass through to them. You can't drink alcohol or caffeine while you're breastfeeding. I can't count the number of women I've seen pump and dump their breast milk because they want to drink alcohol and they didn't want to pass that through to the baby. And I, I believe the time frame is that if you have had a drink, you have to wait 24 hours before resuming breastfeeding. So in order to keep the milk supply coming in, they will pump the milk um, to stimulate, stimulate the breast milk production, but then dump it out and not give it to their infant. So that's what it means by pump and dump. There are also tons of women who have to completely change their diet while they're breastfeeding and stop eating dairy or certain vegetables because what they eat uh, can upset their baby's tummy or causes their baby to have, you know, acid reflux or other digestive issues. So they have to stop, they have to weed out certain foods or just go by a completely bland diet and then start reintroducing food slowly so that they can figure out what it is that is causing these issues in the baby. So again, there are so many things that you have to deal with while you're nursing your baby because what you, what you eat and what you ingest goes directly into their system. So what the CDC is talking about here is breast milk that's completely filled with body altering chemicals and medications 
if you're a biological woman and whatever the fluid that a man's drug-induced breast tissue is secreting and calling these things completely safe for an infant. So Dr. Miriam Grossman, and if you haven't seen the documentary, uh, What is a Woman by Matt Walsh? You're affirming it with hormones that have never been used in this way. Puberty blockers, which are completely reversible. One of the drugs used is Lupron, right? Which mm -hmm. has actually been used to chemically castrate sex offenders. You know what? I'm not sure that we should continue with this interview. So you don't want to talk about the drugs that you give to kids, or? How can they be removing the healthy breasts of 15-year-old girls? How can this whole thing be happening, Matt? She was in uh, a good portion of it, explaining the things that she has had to deal with as transgender identities have surged, and she's had to deal with a lot of the negative mental and physical repercussions of that in her practice. She went on with Steve Bannon to discuss this new development from the CDC, and she had a lot to say about this. So this is about three minutes long, but it is so important to hear. So let's hear what she has to say. Morning, I discovered that the CDC, listen closely here, the CDC, a formerly reputable, trusted institution in this country, is now telling health providers that they need to assist their uh, patients who are men living as women and who want to, I'm not making this up, they want to feed their infants from their chemically induced breast tissue. So the CDC is saying, all you providers out there, you have to know how to, how to facilitate this to happen. And what this means, ladies and gentlemen, what this means is that these... Hold, 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 hang on, hang, whoa, 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 hang, hang on, just, I just so I can understand, I'm just a stupid Mick. You're t is this you're saying that men uh, 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 breastfeeding children? Is that what you're talking about? A man would breastfeed a child? Is that okay. th th what this means? That is what we're talking about, except that it is not at all breastfeeding. What it is is uh, men who are being given medications that have as an adverse effect of the medication, an adverse effect, it, it causes their their breast tissue to create a substance that is then excreted. So this is not breast milk. This is not breast milk in any fashion. And as a woman and a mother and grandmother, and as a physician, I am livid that our CDC, a, a, a government institution, that's there for us to trust and to turn to as authorities in medicine are now taking this just unbelievable, egregious position and saying that men living as women can be given these drugs for off-label use. Okay, so some of these drugs, for example, they might treat schizophrenia or other medical illnesses. And as I mentioned, they have this adverse effect. It's called galactorrhea. It means that a man's breast tissue begins to secrete a substance. That substance is not breast milk. Furthermore, that substance that is going to be, that is given to these infants has chemicals in, in it. So those uh, drugs that are given to those men who think that they can breastfeed, those chemicals are going to be absorbed by the infant. That's our CDC these days. That's what's going on. So if you look up this term that she's using called galactorrhea, um, it's pretty easy to see. It says that this is not a normal thing in men. Um, it is stimulated by a lack of testosterone in their body, but can also be encouraged by increased doses of estrogen. 
Um, here it says, you know, fluid leaking from one or both nipples is called nipple discharge. Discharge from a man's breast is not normal and should always be checked by a doctor. Nipple discharge may be a symptom of an infection, a side effect of a medicine, or maybe a symptom of breast cancer. Treatment depends on what is causing the nipple discharge. You may need more tests to find out the cause. And if you do a search to find out if uh, what they're secreting is actually breast milk. You know, it says it has been previously reported that men with and without known disease can produce milk, but no studies to date have demonstrated that their secretion contains milk constituents produced specifically by the breast. And you can try and make the argument that what these infants are ingesting is breast milk because these the males that are doing it have taken enough hormones supposedly to uh, increase their milk production or increase the breast tissue to make it that of a woman's. But the fact is that they are having to take so much of it to promote the growth of something that did not occur naturally. And that is what is being passed along to these infants. And you can hear the anger in Dr. Grossman's voice because she knows that there are numerous medications that these individuals are taking. So it's not even just the hormones. And this is going to be passed through a tiny, through to a tiny baby. I mean, as an adult, you sign up for these drugs and you might be thinking, they're making me so happy. They helped my body grow breasts and they feminized my face and softened my skin and redist redistributed fat throughout my body or whatever you feel like the positive effects of taking these drugs and hormones have been. And I might find it questionable, but whatever. You also sign up for the risks, the potential blood clots, the memory loss, the sterility, the halted development, the blood pressure and the body pains. You took that upon yourself to change and alter your body in that way. And you accepted the potential harm and irreversible damage that you would be doing to yourself. This is an innocent baby and they did not ask for this. This is really just about what is making these individuals like this person here feel better. Um, and not to mention, when babies are tiny and even through toddlerhood, it's almost impossible to find a safe cold or fever medicine for them. There are a handful that you can get away with up until they're about two years old, but you don't really start to have a lot of options for them until they're about six, which can be really challenging when your infant is sick and there's really nothing that you can give them. So it would be a logical conclusion, not a theory, not an assumption, not a guess, but legitimate, factual, irrefutable conclusion that if you are taking potent drugs that are strong enough to make your body unnaturally grow breast tissue or to make you grow a beard or to completely change your voice, not to mention all of the other negative side effects that you've got to deal with, that those drugs and hormones are going to directly affect your baby's body uh, in their growth and probably their mental state and their mental growth. And What's really concerning is that there really hasn't been any long-term study on what the effect will be. So it's it's astonishing that the CDC would put this out there and say, this is how we're going to guide you to do this effectively, but they can't point to anything that says this is how it's going to affect these babies in their growth and in their toddlerhood. And as they, um, you know, get bigger and develop into their childhood and into their teen years, we don't have any of that, but they're still making this some kind of widespread recommendation. <laughs> Not to mention that this is 100% a fetish. We have been surrounded by the nonstop screeching of trans activists for a long time now, and it's becoming more and more clear the kind of people that this group is made up of. There are, you know, people who perhaps just want to be able to openly express who they are in their clothing, in their hair color, and whatever it is, which is perfectly fine. But then there are men who, you know, and then there are men that are likely gay or women who um, are likely, you know, lesbian and so socially want to present either more feminine or masculine. But then there's this whole other level. There are grown adult men who want to literally live as women and be called women and look like women and dress like women and who have the world perceive them as women. And this is a fetish, plain and simple. They receive pleasure from living their lives as women and having the world see them that way. And there are also men who have fetishes and twisted fantasies about themselves and women like this guy, because he says, you know, I am only, I've only been able to breastfeed my child for a few weeks. He's putting himself out there as, you know, I just wanted to care for my child. I'm just doing what I, you know, my identity 
tells me that I should naturally want to do and my identity, what my identity tells me that I'm going to be happy. So there's this guy. But if we look at more pictures, he actually has a very strong fetish when it comes to nipple clamps. So essentially what we're doing is in his world, a baby sucking on his nipples is another way for him to live out this fantasy, to take the pleasure that he receives from identifying as a female, as a woman, as living his life as a woman and having the world perceive him as such, taking that to the next level and carrying out this fantasy to, you know, a higher level. Um, and now he can do it openly, whereas something he might have had to, you know, hide before, he can do it openly and be praised for it. Now, as I said before, you can hear in Dr. Grossman's voice how livid she is. And she's as livid as anybody with a soul would be, including myself. And knowing that people have become so detached from reality and so incredibly self-serving and brainwashed beyond moral reasoning that she knows that there are plenty of people who will put their feelings above the safety of these babies because ultimately in this movement in this activist movement the most important thing is how i feel what i want how the world perceives me and you know me living as my true identity and everybody else that is negatively impacted by that that has to live with the consequences essentially just needs to go kick rocks including these babies so I just have to say, if the CDC ever hoped to be recognized as a reputable organization ever again, they've just eliminated whatever small chance they had uh, after, you know, they completely destroyed themselves through their politici politicization of COVID. Um, whatever chance they had of redeeming themselves is completely gone because this is nothing but political activism. There is no safety and there is no uh morality there is no moral guidance in this there is no you know drawing the line in this whatsoever and saying you know what like we understand your identity but we also have to look at biology biological reality we have to look at scientific data we have to look at the facts in saying that what whatever is coming out of your nipples is not the same as breast milk that naturally occurs in women and you know we don't even let women have an alcoholic drink or take any kind of, you know, unapproved medication or do any number of things while they're breastfeeding. So it would not make sense for us to approve this, this uh, activity by you as a male whose breasts were only induced by very heavy and potent medication, but they are not choosing to do that. They are saying your identity comes before science, your identity comes before health, and they are proving that political activism is far more important than the what it what the basis for their organization is actually supposed to be, which is unbiased health and medicine. So let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below, because I'm sure that a lot of you have many thoughts as I did. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. I'm a biological woman that medically transitioned to appear like a male. I will never be a man. It got me at 42. Your child doesn't have a chance.